Filipino immigration to the United States had basically halted during the Great Depression. World War II changed that. After World War II, Congress passed a law that finally allowed Filipinos to become American citizens, though it kept a tight quota on Filipino immigration. Even with this small opening, a new wave of Filipino immigrants came, including Filipino war brides, veterans, and dependents of American citizens. Your stepmom became a citizen when she was in the States, right after World War II? Well, I think she was considered a citizen because her father is an American citizen, so I don't really know. But she was able to sponsor me. She was able to prove that her father is an American citizen. And she was born. I think, I, I forgot what the law is. I'm not really sure about that, how it happened. But she was able to prove that she's, her father is an American. And she was able to get out of the Philippines with the first GI boat. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 made admittance to the United States based on a first-come, first-served basis with preference for family members, professionals, and those with skills the United States wanted. In the four years after the 1965 Immigration Act, 65% of the Filipinos who came under occupational categories were professional and technical workers. When I got back to Manila, I got my acceptance at New York Medical College as an intern. Because our school is uh, subsidized or affiliated with, well, supported by Rock uh, Rockefeller Foundation. That's why we're is we have, uh, I was easily accepted in New York. Many Filipino nurses were recruited to meet a nursing shortage in the United States, a shortage that had first been noted during World War II, but only increased as the healthcare sector expanded and the number of nurses did not keep up with the demand. Even the Shenandoah Valley was briefly part of this nursing migration. They were recruited. The head of the nursing department went to the Philippines to recruit these nurses for the Bridgewater Nursing Home. But they only stayed a year because it was kind of, you know, we were, it was in the late 70s, if I remember right. And there's not much things going on in here. They decided to go to a bigger cities like Chicago, New York, L.A. And we don't have any, they don't drive, and they don't have any car, of course, and it's hard for them to get around. And, and they went where the pay is bigger. Because they want to, normally they all want to send money back home. So, for a bigger opportunity. Between 1970 and 2011, the Filipino immigrant population had increased by 882%. Filipino nurses, doctors, engineers, teachers, and other professionals have been recruited to work in the United States. In addition to this so-called brain drain, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos have come to the United States through family reunification channels. While early Filipino immigrants came as single men to work in the agricultural fields of the West Coast, Post-1965 immigrants can be found in all walks of life across the United States, including in the Shenandoah Valley.